We're wrapping up the information on mixtures in this chapter. We're going to talk about colligative properties. A colligative property is the property of a mixture uh, whose value depends on the relative number of solute and solvent particles and not on the identity of the particles. All right, so since we're depending on the number of particles, what we're looking at is we're looking at concentration units in terms of the number of particles, like moles of a substance. And um, the specific colligative properties we want to look at include vapor pressure, uh, temperature, freezing point temperature, boiling point temperature, and osmotic pressure. So let's take them one at a time. In terms of the vapor pressure of a mixture, We've talked a lot about this. We talked about it starting back in the gas chapter. Um, the vapor pressure of a liquid is the pressure of the gas phase above the liquid. It turns out that for a pure substance, you know, it, it, there is a certain vapor pressure which is dependent on the temperature. But if we look at the vapor pressure of a mixture, it is related to the vapor pressure of the, of the solvent, of the, the, the substance that there is the most of but it's not the same as it as the vapor pressure of the pure stuff substance. In fact, we always see that the vapor pressure of a mixture is lower than the pure substance. So the vapor pressure of a mixture is lower than the vapor pressure of the pure substance and this is a very uh, measurable um, amount. Um, the, the, the amount that the vapor pressure is lowered is very well calculated and well known and this is known as Reynolds law. There was a man who was studying um, the effect of uh, mixtures on the vapor pressure of a, of, a, of a solvent. His name was Reynolds, and he devised the equation which related the vapor pressure changes of the mixture of the mixture compared to the number of solute particles. If we say that the vapor pressure of the pure liquid has this little naught symbol, so the P naught is the vapor pressure of the, the pure solvent. All right. Once you add the solute, once you make the, me the mixture, the change in the vapor pressure, the change in the, in the partial pressure, if you will, the pressure of the gas above the liquid, is equal to negative the mole fraction of the solute times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So we're always going to lower, that's why the negative sign is there, we're going to lower the vapor pressure um, if you add something to the mixture, to the pure solvent. Um, that's why we have the negative sign there. If you come across this equation in a textbook where there is no negative sign, then they are assuming that you understand that the vapor pressure is going to be lowered by that much. And by the way, this is the change in the vapor pressure. This does not give you an absolute vapor pressure. This tells you how much the vapor pressure changes by. Recall that the mole fraction of the solute, we saw this when we were looking at units, the mole fraction of the solute is calculated as moles of solute over moles of solute plus solvent. In the denominator here we have the total moles in the mixture, which is just adding the two of them together. It is a fractional numerical value. And so there will always be a fractional fraction of the pure solvent vapor pressure that the vapor pressure will be lowered. So you might need to, ch to calculate this based on information of the mixture in terms of uh, being able to calculate the mixture's mole fraction. This would require that you know what the vapor pressure of the pr pure solvent is. These are typically values we would look up in a table. All right, next. The next two colligative properties, we're going to take them together that we'll look at, um, are known as freezing point, freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. Turns out, if you look at a pure substance, let's take water for example. Water is going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. Water is going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius in the pure state. If I add a solute to water, if I make a solution, an aqueous solution, the freezing point is no longer zero, the boiling point is no longer 100. And in fact, the freezing point will be lower in a solution and the boiling point will be higher 
in a solution. That's why we call it the freezing point depression and the boiling point elevation. Um, we can sort of see this relationship by looking at the relationship of vapor pressure above a liquid. We saw that um, in the previous in, uh, colligative property. We were talking about how the vapor pressure is actually lowered if you add a solute. Um, and that's why we actually raise the boiling point of the substance. And that also um, can explain why the freezing point is lowered. But the bottom line is that if you add something to water, it will freeze lower than zero degrees. If you add something to water, it will boil higher than 100 degrees. Um, how much lower it freezes, how much higher it boils, does not depend on the identity of the substance you add. It just depends on the amount, the number of moles. And the relationship between these changes in boiling point and freezing point that we see can be written by this generalized equation. The change in temperature that we observe is equal to some constant times the molality of the solution. In terms of the freezing point of the solution, we usually s drop a little F subscript on the delta T to indicate we're looking at the change in the freezing point, and we'll drop a little F on the constant, this freezing point depression constant, um, to indicate we're looking at the freezing point. Now, you might look up the freezing point depression constant in a table, or that might be what you're trying to determine experimentally by knowing the molality of the solution and measuring at the change in freezing point. And so those, those we can devise experiments and questions which would um, sort of look at both of those aspects. The equation for looking at the boiling point elevation is exactly the same except for now we usually so drop a little B subscript on the change in temperature to indicate we're now looking at the change in the boiling point. The K, the constant, has a little B subscript to indicate we're looking at the boiling point elevation constant, and we're still talking about the molality. Please note that this does not calculate the absolute freezing point of the substance or boiling point. It is the change compared to the, boil, the freezing point or the boiling point of the pure substance. This delta is always change. And also recall that molality is calculated as moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. You don't have to be talking about an aqueous solution. If you're talking about some other solvent, then you would need to know the pure freezing point and boiling point to be able to use that to calculate um, the change in freezing point or boiling point in order to determine the new freezing point or boiling point. All right, next. All right, the last colligative property we want to look at is osmotic pressure. This one might be particularly useful if you're, look, if you're in biology. Basically, the osmotic pressure um, is defined as the pressure needed to keep osmosis from happening. Osmosis is the, the flow of the solvent through a semipermeable membrane, um, and so an osmotic pressure would be the pressure, the force you needed to push on um, the, the solution in order to keep the solvent from flowing across a membrane. Typically, um, a solvent will flow from uh, more dilute to more concentrated. That may seem counterintuitive, but it's trying to dilute the more concentrated solution. Um, so water will flow from a dilute to a concentrated in order to try to dilute the more concentrated side of the, of the uh, membrane, if you will. Basically, the osmotic pressure is uh, usually symbolized a capital pi symbol, P for pressure. It is a pressure, just like we talk about in terms of gases, but we're talking about forcing, uh, pushing on a liquid, and so we don't usually use P for it and it is calculated as the molarity of the solution times the ideal gas constant times the T in temperature. So osmotic pressure is given as pi equals MRT, where this is the molarity. If I just do a, let me do a little rearranging for you. This is, again, like pressure in terms of gases, but it's not a gas. We're not talking about pushing on a gas. We're talking about pushing on a liquid. Uh, so we use the pi. Molarity is moles per liter or moles per volume. And if you just look at this equation rearranged just a little bit, we see that it is PV equals 
N R T, moles times R times T. It is essentially the ideal gas law, except for we're not talking about a gas now, we're talking about osmotic pressure pushing on a liquid. And again, you would um, be given enough information to calculate this if this is what you were looking for.